I've been making a series of videos with Drift which generate random patches. Some have been constrained to make things like um, kick drums or bass sounds. And I had a request if I could constrain the Drift instrument rack I've created to generate pads and keys. Well, I've done that and can have a quick listen to some of the examples from it. And then I'll show you how to take the original Drift instrument rack I generated and to modify it. It's very quick actually, there's just a few settings you need to change to change the constraints uh, to enable the instrument rack to generate more sort of pad-like or key-like presets when you randomize them, or at least to get you in the ballpark. You might need a little bit of fine tuning, but it'll get you in the ballpark and then you can just fine tune them and save them as presets, drift presets effectively. Let's have a quick listen then, and then I'll just show you what modifications are needed. Okay, so you're going to need to begin with the original Drift-O-Matic uh, instrument rack which I created. It's used to generate random presets within Drift. If you don't have this or you've not watched the tutorial before, I'll leave a link below and a link up here, a card up here. You can have a look at that. All of these racks are now available on Patreon if you're not interested in doing the tutorial but would be interested in using these racks. Um, Let's have a look then. As I say, you're going to need the original Drift-O-Matic, that's this here, and I'm going to drop a version into this channel here, Pad Drifter, and rename it. So we'll call this one Pad Drifter now, and this one we will set up to generate, well, we'll constrain to make more pad-like sounds. They'll get you, as I say, into the area you need to be in, and you can fine tweak them here. So it's really just a, a case of changing the constraints on the instrument. So I'll go through them very quickly. Um, the noise gain here, I dropped to two decibels. The low pass resonance here, I dropped a little bit for this one, 0.75. And the high pass frequency here, this one here, I've reduced from 20.5 kilohertz to 2000 so 2 kilohertz effectively. Um, what else do we have here? We have the mo yeah, most of most of the changes are actually in the sustain, the envelope section here, how the sound is um, played over time. So let's change these around. The first one is the sustain, which I introduced a small sustain, always 20% here. So there's always some sustain in the sound. The same for envelope two, 30% on this one. And then this doesn't change, but the envelope release time changes because we're dealing with pads. And this goes from 10 milliseconds to 10,000, which is 10 seconds up to 60. For envelope two release, we go to 15,000, 15 seconds to 60. Envelope one decay, also 15, thousand and envelope two decay oh I apologize that should be ten thousand this one here envelope two decay is fifteen thousand sorry these don't change sixty seconds the attack time we want to increase to two seconds so two thousand and envelope two attack to four thousand so four seconds and that that's done so if we now come out of here, click a random, and activate, we should get some kind of pad. There we go. You can always, say, adjust these values here. 
You find you're getting too much noise. You can reduce the noise. Let's try another one. Okay, so let's have a look at the keys drifter. Uh, that does take a little bit more fine tuning once you've got a sound I find, but you can get some nice sort of keys or lead sounds from it. Let's have a look at that one then. Same thing again, we're going to um, drop into here an instance of Driftomatic, and we'll rename this now. Uh, keys Drifter. Once you've built the racks here, you can just click here and save it. That'll save it into your user library under presets. And um, any pad sounds you generate or any key sounds you generate, you just save here and they actually save as drift presets. So you can then use them independently of this rack. You can just have them as drift. So you're just really creating your presets for drift. Okay, but let's have a look at this one. Same principle. We um, go into the mapping and we just want to constrain it in a different way. The noise gain I reduced quite a bit here to minus 19. Um, then we have the high pass was adjusted again here, again to 2000. And once again, the main settings come here in the envelope forms. Envelope one release. I set here to 10 milliseconds and let's have a look envelope one release. 10 milliseconds and here we change this to 3000. So we go from 60 seconds down to three seconds effectively. Our envelope two release. We want to change that as well here to three seconds for so 3000. Then we want to have the decay setting here, also three seconds. And finally, envelope two decay, also three seconds. Then we want to make some modifications to the attack time here, which doesn't want to go up to 15 seconds, but I restricted it to 10 milliseconds, so very short range. Only 0 to 10 milliseconds can be chosen by the random function. And I think that's that, that one done as well. Just check. Yes, I think that's OK. So if we come out of here and randomize this, we should hopefully get some. Let's see what we've got. Oh, you might need to adjust the sustain a little bit. If you find you don't get the sound, just tweak up the sustain. I kept the sustain possibility of sustain to go to zero because the piano can have no sustain it just works with decay and release let's try another one then okay so there we go as i say these racks are available if you don't want to go through the process of creating them yourself just have a look at my patreon account um, thanks for coming by again, enjoy your day as always, and uh, see you next time.